Hi everyone, it's Michael. Um, so today I will show you a sort of well-known theorem, not as well-known as like the Pythagorean theorem and um, some other theorems like that. Um, but this one's called Blanchett's theorem. Um, and it's somewhat surprising. Um, the initial configuration is pretty simple. So uh, if you haven't seen it before, feel free to pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so now I'm gonna go over it. And here I'm gonna give you two different proofs. So the first proof is gonna be purely elementary. Um, and the second proof, I'm gonna use projective geometry to kind of just crush it. And it kind of just proves it in two seconds. So the second proof is kind of gonna show you how powerful projective geometry is. Um, but the first proof is gonna be more elementary if uh, you haven't seen too much projective geometry before. Okay, so we have a triangle ABC. Uh, H is the foot of the perpendicular from A to BC. Uh, K can be any point on AH. So um, it could be the orthocenter, it could be some other point. Um, so there's a, kind of a lot of flexibility there. Um, and then we let BK meet AC at D and CK meets AB at E. And we want to show that angle EHK is equal to angle DHK. Okay, so it's a pretty interesting theorem. Um, so I'm actually not sure if I've seen this proof before. So I found this proof this morning and I think it's possible that I may have seen it before, um, but I'm not sure. If I did, it was a while back, but in any event, I sort of got the inspiration for this proof from uh, my first proof of Cheva's theorem. So if you've seen my video on Sheva's theorem, um, for my first proof, I kind of drew a parallel line that sort of seemed to come out of nowhere, but it created a lot of similar triangles. And so for this problem, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to start by drawing a parallel line through K to side BC. Um, and I'm going to label the intersection points um, all those intersection points, so G, F, I, and J. Um, so I know it's probably a little crammed here. Um, so we have a lot of similar triangles now with this parallel line through K. Um, and my ultimate goal is I want to show that, so we want to show that E, H, K is equal to D, H, K. Which is kind of the same as which is the same as showing FHK is IHK. So if we can show that FK equals IK, that would solve the problem. But with all these similar triangles, um, that looks like it might be plausible. Okay. So um, the first thing to note is um, triangle EGK is similar to triangle EBC. Um, and I write here e EF corresponds to EH. So that means that in this little triangle EGK, um, the side EF um, basically is the same, in the triangle EGK, that, that segment EF will be proportional to the segment EH in triangle EBC. And that, to me, that's kind of obvious. Um, but it's, it's, I guess technically it's also because triangles EGF is similar to EBH and EFK is similar to EHC. So maybe there's one more step before you can just see that. Um, but basically F splits the segment GK in the same ratio that H splits the segment BC. Um, so that's what we're interested in. Okay. So since F splits the segment GK in the same ratio that H splits the segment BC, uh, we have KF over KG is CH over BC, because um, those are corresponding parts of those two similar triangles. And then doing the same thing, uh, we could get, um, we have triangle DKJ is similar to DBC, and so KI over KJ is BH over BC. Um, and now I think I'm going to rewrite this, but under the, there we go. All right. 
So we we want to show that kf equals ki. That's kind of why I came up with these two ratios. Um, and we're almost there. Um, so if we divide the two, we would get kf over ki times something on this side. Here you, we get ch over bh. So therefore, we want to kind of find ch over bh or bh over ch. And we can do that. Um, through the similar triangles AGJ and ABC. So AGJ is similar to ABC and AK corresponds to AH. And so therefore we have KG over KJ is BH over CH. Um, so now we're, we're essentially there. We just have to combine all these equations. We see um, basically on the right side, everything will cancel. So, so here's the algebra. You want to divide the first two and then multiply by the third. So if you divide these two, you get CH over BH. And then if you multiply by BH over CH, you get one. So you get one on the right side. And then here you divide this by this and multiply by the third. And if you work out the algebra, um, you would end up getting KF over uh, ki is equal to 1, and so uh, which I've kind of um, just jumped to the end. So if kf over ki equals 1, then kf is ki. And then, well, if kf equals ki, um, we know that um, hk is perpendicular to if, and that's because hk is perpendicular to bc, and bc is parallel to this line through k by construction. So HK has to be perpendicular to IF. So therefore, if KF equals KI, then HK has to be the bisector of FHI. Okay, so this kind of rehashes what I said. So HK is perpendicular to FI. So FHK has to equal IHK. And so therefore, EHK has to equal DHK. And that solves the problem. So what's interesting is the only place that we used where AH is perpendicular to BC um, is that IF has to be perpendicular to HK in order for um, HK to be an angle bisector. Um, so there's a couple generalizations of this problem that I've seen. Um, if you know of any others, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, but I kind of agree that this, this proof kind of required a little bit of cleverness in constructing that parallel line through K. I think there's some other proofs that might require a little less cleverness, like with cyclic quadrilaterals or something. But this one, I, I, I was just inspired by that proof of Chubb's theorem that I mentioned. All right, so now I'm going to give a proof using projective geometry that really just um, makes this problem seem very easy but you have to know the projective geometry. So I'm going to start by letting um, DE meet BC at a point F. Um, so that's kind of why I drew the figure so far to the right so that I'd have room for point F here. Um, so this is a very common configuration in projective geometry. Um, basically, whenever you have a triangle and you have um, three Chebians all going through a point, in this case K, and, uh, and AK meets BC at H, and DE meets BC at F. It, it just always turns out that these four points are in harmonic conjugation, F, B, H, and C. So the cross ratio is one, um, which is the same as saying they're in harmonic conjugation. Um, and now what we can do is if we have any four points in their, uh, and they're, and we um, basically take another point and we, we um, draw the lines from that point to each of those four and we intersect it with another line, the cross ratio has to stay, stay the same. So in this case, it still has to be one. So if we take F, B, H, and C, uh, we draw the four lines through K um, and we see where it meets the line DF. So FK will obviously meet DF at just F. BK will meet it at D. Um, HK will meet it at G. And CK will meet it at E. 
So the cross ratio of these four points also has to be one. And some people will just, some people who are really good at projective geometry, they'll just know right off the bat that this cross ratio has to be one. Um, but now, um, so from the problem, since AH is a um, perpendicular to BC, angle F HG is 90 degrees. And whenever you have four points in harmonic conjugation, F, F, E, G, and D, and you have a perpendicular line that goes through two um, points like this, the, the, basically the first and the third point on the line, it always follows <clears throat> that G, H is going to be an angle bisector of E, H, D, and F, H is going to be an external bisector of E, H, D. So that kind of means if you extended D, H to some point, then FH would be the bisector of this external angle. Um, but anyways, that already solves the problem because then if, if GH is, is an internal bisector of EHD and FH is an external bisector, in fact, that last portion we don't need for this problem, but it's still good to know. So then EHK is equal to DHK. We've already solved it. Um, so yeah, projective geometry, it's, it's amazing. Um, so I hope you learned a little there. Um, if you like this video, please give, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.